Hey guys, so answering another email here. Somebody is emailing me about developing a mobile app. So I'm gonna read through the email, give you my commentary along the way, and uh, everything will be perfect. All right, so he says, Hi Stefan, I've emailed you before regarding app development and also web development, uh, which you answered, but this is more important and regarding mobile development. I recently purchased your Python course to begin learning programming as Python is said to be a good beginner language to learn. I want to move forward with a mobile app idea. I have, uh, he's, okay, first point of criticism, and he's a young guy, constructive criticism. Just caught, you caught me in a good moment here. I have a little bit of time, although, you know, which, when you become an entrepreneur, what you're gonna discover is that you have unlimited work you could work 24 7 seven days 24 7 yeah 24 7 that's seven days a week all day for 10 years and you'll still have more work to do so one of the things you have to do once you start making money as an entrepreneur and you're successful is you have to learn to uh, limit how much you work you have to take breaks mentally emotionally and physically from work Anyway, I don't know why I brought that up. I lost my train of thought, but let me just say, he's a young guy, young whippersnapper, so fantastic, 19 years old. Great time to start a business. I started my first business, it's either 17 or 18. You know, it's like over 150 years ago, so I forget what age exactly, but I was quite young. Anyway, so um, he said he started learning the Python course, but he's not done. You have to finish the courses. Why? Because even if your goal is not to be a developer, you have to finish the courses so you understand coding, you understand programming, so, when you, so that when you are speaking with developers, you will be able to speak nerd with them. It's gonna make the communications with your developers much easier. You're gonna be able to help architect a little bit more easily. Well, architects a bit of an exaggeration. You have to do years of coding before you can actually architect, but at least you'll be able to uh, understand the basic process and be able to communicate more easily and also will help you uh, save money a little bit because again the more you know about the process better choices you can make in terms of the uh, the business anyway so yeah so first thing you gotta can finish that Python course he says I want to move forward with mobile app I have and I've been doing research uh, on Instagram, it is similar to, uh, I want to build with Python. I'm, I'm just sort of skimming this. Essentially, you saw that Instagram, I guess, is built with Python on the back end. So he says, I got to learn Python. By the way, Python's great. I teach Python. But so many languages these days, except for Ruby, are amazing for building anything these well anything that they're concentrated on so you python's great for back-end server process and ai and uh, it's good for web app development uh, php is good for that c sharp.net is good for that java spring is good for that uh, etc of course javascript node these days the web app development stacks javascript java php python not ruby all these things are good. They can all produce good apps. Instagram is cool. They use Python. PHP was, uh, Facebook was built with PHP. Uh, LinkedIn was built with Java. Microsoft.com, I'm pretty sure it was built with ASP.NET. So, you know, don't get caught up. With if you like Python, then use it. If you like PHP, then use it. But don't, one of the things I try to stress on this channel is don't get caught up in the languages. You know, um, each has their strengths and their weaknesses. There's times to use one or the other. Of course, that's where you have to assess the project and sort of say, okay, this project might be better not to use Ruby. I get a lot of requests from people wanting me to look over their projects, specs, to give them an assessment in terms of their tech. And yes, you know, don't get me wrong. Given the project at hand, certain technologies will lend itself better. In my freelancing days, when I got pretty mature as a freelancer, I got away from the uh, noobish uh, junior uh, way of thinking where I thought I was a Java developer. And everything had to be Java, in my opinion, at that time. 
but as I became more mature, I realized that sometimes it'd be better to do ASP.NET C-sharp, sometimes it'd be better to do PHP, sometimes it would be better to do Python Django. So when you look at an application, you have to decide whether or not uh, one language might be particularly advantageous over another, depending. So let me just go on with this before I get go down my little rabbit hole. Uh, I have been... So one, one little, little safety tip for you young entrepreneur, budding entrepreneurs, again, just to help you out. He has these very long paragraphs. It's forcing me to expand my screen, contract my screen. And he just caught me in a good mood. So I'm actually going through it. But, you know, dude, short, 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 you know, three, four lines, boom, 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 boom. Write business writing, which is, you know. Anyway, so he's getting into this. I'm just going to paraphrase. Essentially, he's worried about, I'll say, I, I'm researching things I need to learn about developing in the mobile, mobile space. There's so much information regarding mobile development, ranging from hosting to load balancing servers, algorithms, Swift, Java, native, cross-platform, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's overwhelming, but that's why I'm here. So when you are prototyping a new idea, you have a new idea, you go, ding. I got a new idea for this amazing app that's going to transform the world and it will order pizza on the side. You should most of the time just get it out quick and dirty. What I typically, not most, all the time, get it out quick and dirty. Most of the time when you're developing apps, it's probably going to be either mobile or web. I would suggest unless it's a game that requires or some other type of mobile app that requires that you leverage the, the full power of your hardware, whether it be iOS based or Android based, I would go web app or maybe something like a flood or some cross platform. Why? Because you want to prototype something out quick and dirty. It may be, depending on the needs of your project, that it might be better and quicker to put it out with uh, native with Swift iOS. So you say, I'll put it out on iOS first because that market, the iPhone users are more likely to pay for an app perhaps, and just see how it goes. But keep in mind that there's huge advantages to using cross-platform solutions like a Flutter or PWA, which are, you know, Flutter is its own thing. PWA is one of the web-based cross-platform solutions like React Native or PhoneGap, etc. For example, recent uh, thing uh, with uh, Starbucks. Starbucks said they developed their mobile app as a PWA rather than native. They, I think they had a native version. They said, we're going to do PWA, which is progressive web app, which is using web technologies to develop mobile apps. Big advantages are is that it is cross-platform. You write one code base, works on Android and iOS. Whereas if you write native, you got to write it all for iOS with Swift, Objective-C, and then you got to write it all in, and you got to write it again in Kotlin or Java for Android. What a pain. Two code bases, very expensive, very time consuming. You create a PWA, Bob's your uncle, one code base, you're up, you're up and running quick. And uh, yeah, so, and it also could be easily adapted to just work on a website, as a website. That being said, so Starbucks, said, hey, we're going to do it PWA. And they don't need to save money, Starbucks. As far as I understand, Starbucks get a few bucks in their pockets, right? But they decided to do PWA anyway. And what happened? A 50% increase in the amount of usage. 50%, five zero. Why? Because a lot of people don't want to install mobile apps now. Like, I don't. I am very reluctant to install mobile apps because it could be security issues. It just clutters up the whole thing. PWA, you don't need to. Uh, if you, it's one click to install a clip, boom, and you don't have to go to an app store. It's, it's so much easier. It's a better process. I think PWA and cross-platform solutions in the end are going to win when the, in terms of building mobile, in my opinion. I'm not saying Swift and all this is going to go away totally, but I think it's going to become more specialized. Although there are times, as I said in previous videos, there are times when you're going to have to use native mobile. Maybe you have to access, I don't know, the camera or something that you can't access with cross-platform solutions. But this is always changing, of course. The you know, cross-platform is getting more and more and more and more and more powerful. Anyway, so he's getting overwhelmed with all of this. Bottom line is I would look to see whether or not whatever your apps need, your mobile apps needs happen to be, see if you can do it with web tech. And if you can, then I would just use web tech. 
because it's just going to save you a lot of time and money. So let me go on. Ah, uh, he's overwhelmed. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. What I am getting at is that there is so much information out there, hoping you can set me in the right direction. I think I just did. I have yet to find other individuals to help bring this idea to life because I want to have the right information to lead a team to create an amazing product as I know the idea has great potential. That's, I like that sentence. Very well written sentence, by the way. I like that. I have yet to find other individuals to help me bring this idea to life. When I read a sentence like that, I know it sounds silly, but when I read a sentence like that, I say to myself, this kid's got a head on his shoulders. So that's good. The key is that you got, since you're so young, he's 19, if I were you, I would just try to develop a prototype on your own, unless it's something gargantuan. And it just has to be rough, simple, basic prototype that sort of shows the basic functionality. Make it look good and make, even if it only does one of 20 things that you want this thing to do, show one thing working you know, smoothly, and then you say, this is what the vision is. People are very visual, so they want to see what it is you have in mind. When you have a great demo like that to show, which you develop quickly through PWA technology or Flutter, whatever happens to be best given the needs of your project, then when you show that to a, pr a prospective team, I assume you don't have a lot of money, but when you so show that to a pr prospective team, they're going to be much more inclined to take you seriously and much more excited about the project if you've got something to show them. So take a step back and do that so you can come to the table with something. So he continues, I want to have a strong product with users and me being a developer of the app before seeking investment to have leverage over this. That's a good idea too. The longer you can wait before you get outside investors and speculators, the more control and more ownership you will have over the product. You know what I mean? And so, um, and who knows, depending on the business model, you may be able to bootstrap this thing on your own, self-finance, depending, I don't know. Uh, like for example, I'm fortunate because I'm an ancient nerd wizard, 169 years old, I have uh, have the financial wherewithal, Studio Web has been, I've gotten, no, I've, I've gotten no outside investment, I've been offered investments many times, constantly. People want to throw money at me, but I'm like, nah, I don't need to. I finance myself, in the first few years I had to pay everything out of pocket, uh, and now, of course, now I just grow the business out of cash flow. And um, although there are times when you may want to get outside investors, it depends on the business model as well. So anyway, we will, won't get into that here. So let me just finish this off. I watch many of your videos on YouTube about development as I understand it. You, can, you are from Canada and I was hoping if there was somehow I could meet face to face so we can do a comprehensive breakdown of my vision of this idea. Well. Uh, a little early for that, first of all. Second of all, I, I, time is the thing that it's most fleeting for me at this, uh, you know, when you're my age, you, you want to, time is very important. And I, uh, I'm giving you the time here. So I hope you uh, watch this video and you take, uh, you take this. Um, you don't need, he, he continues, he wants to fly out. I am currently 19 from uh, somewhere in the U.S. He wants to fly out here. No, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to incur expenses. Uh, rule number two in uh, business development or software de business development, any business, don't spend money unless you have to. Don't spend money unless you have to. The biggest mistake people make is to get excited about their project, which is good. That's good. That's not a mistake, that's good, but they get so excited that they rush in. Now, Elvis has been dead a long time, but he used to say, only fools rush in. So you take your time. So you don't need to come see me yet. You should finish the Python course, do the research I talked about, and uh, there you go. Now, seeing me, I cost a lot of money when people, and I don't do it too often because I'm kind of busy, but you don't need to see me right now. Save yourself money. What you should do instead, finish my Python course, and get my web entrepreneur package. It's gonna teach you all kinds of stuff. Huge amount of information based on my 30 plus years, 30 years, well, experience in business and writing code. So uh, there you go, there you go, so there you go, that's it. So I have to say, I like, you know, my only criticism, a little long-winded, uh, at least you got a few paragraphs, that's good. Break it down a little bit more and don't write it so I have to scroll, it, you know, Hit, hit that return key, you know, and I think we're good. So uh, 
I hope this, uh, I hope you find this video useful. All right, guys, bye.